Creates Arts Podcast. Commentary Using Improv. Hello, friend. This is Timothy Kim O'Brien, your head instigator for Create Art Podcast, where I use my over 30 years of experience in the arts and education world to help you tame your inner critic and create more than you consume. So, in 2024 here, and probably continuing into 2025, I'm doing a series of episodes uh, that are dedicated to the Make Fun I Habit workbook by Mike Brennan. I met Mike uh, through another podcast that I do called Find a Podcast About, and he has a podcast called Creative Chats. And I've been inspired by his work now uh, in his podcast for a couple of years. And I really thought, you know, this is the year that, you know, we really need to uh, make fun of habit. So I went through the workbook, which is a uh, 30-day workbook. And what I'm doing is I'm taking each chapter, which is constitutes a day in the workbook, and making it into an episode coming out about every two weeks. And, you know, we're just going through each chapter and discussing, you know, what, what ways we can use these techniques to put fun back in our life, because when we put fun in our life, creativity follows. Uh, it, it's just a natural thing that happens. When you're having a great time, creativity is going to be there for you. So you won't have to worry about inspiration. Um, you won't have to worry about writer's block or dancer's block or whatever artistic discipline you're into. You can just go into this book and find different ways. And you don't have to go th straight through it. You can just randomly pick out a day and do it. But I thought, you know, left side of my brain, let's go ahead and do it in sequential order. So this week we're discussing using improv in your artistic practice. Now let's talk about improv for a second. You know, improv isn't just about being funny. It's when, you know, two or more people gather together and um, they, they, they can do situational comedy. They can do, you know, take uh, snippets from or ideas from the audience. And it happens to be funny. And I think we're all naturally funny people anyways. Um, I started doing improv and it was really scary for me, but I started doing improv as part when I was in Chicago uh, as part of a uh, vet art project. And uh, that was to help veterans um, with, you know, whatever trauma that they had went through and using art. And it, it was it was a lot of art therapy. And one of my other jobs that I did uh, later on after I moved out of Chicago was to uh, help uh, soldiers transition into becoming veterans. And art therapy was one of the things that we utilized. And I, I think it's a very powerful uh, therapy that folks can use. You don't have to be a veteran. You can be anybody. You can be Joe Schmo on the street. But I think art therapy is something that can be used to help people out. And using art to express your creativity is a wonderful thing. So I did this improv uh, thing. And I have a theater background anyways, as you know. And uh, I had done uh, in in you know my studies, I had done uh, some uh, some improv work, nothing really fancy, but then I met up with this group called Salsation and they're out of Chicago. They're still there in Chicago and it's a comedy with a Latin flavor. And yeah, I was the token white guy, but I had a lot of fun with these folks and they were so generous and it wasn't about being funny. It just naturally came across as being funny when we performed on stage. So it's not, you know, think of the best jokes. It's not like being a stand-up comic where you're standing there by yourself and you're trying to make an audience laugh. It's just you're taking what's given to you and you have fun with it. And a lot of great stuff can come out from that. One of the roles that I played was White Obama. Uh, and it was, oh my gosh, hilarious. But, you know, me as a White Obama, come on now. So... Uh, when I got to this chapter, I was like, oh, yay, we get the improv stuff again. So um, I was really happy to get this. And one of our big things uh, in improv is called yes and. So you never turn down what your partner gives you. You work with it. And that, for me, is what improv is all about. 
let's get back a little bit to uh, the workbook here, Make Fun of Habit. So what Mike does in this workbook is that he'll give you a little story, just like I gave you here about my uh, experiences with the improv. And then uh, he'll do questions for you to ponder, uh, give you some action items for you to do, and then some tips on uh, how you can add this bit of fun into your life and make that fun a habit. So let's go with the questions that he uh, wants us to ponder. And the first question is, what seems exciting or scary about improv? And for me, uh, what's exciting about it and what's scary is that, and, and I think this is true for many people, is that, you know, is it going to be funny for the audience? And when we take that away, you don't have to be funny. You just take what's given with you. Trust your partner. Tr you, you have to have this trust with your partner and you need to know your partner and you want to kind of know where they're going with things so when you have that when you build up that trust through different exercises through practices and all that and, and a lot of people think oh yeah they just go up on stage and do it and there you go and it's done right there on stage it's not there's a lot of practice that goes behind it so that's what seems you know scary uh, to me is that you know you're a you're not trying to be funny and b you got to trust that person that's next to you so you got to build that relationship with that person but it's also the most fun thing because uh, it's also the most one of the most exciting things because then you're connecting with that person and you're knowing, you know, kind of where they're going to go. And sometimes they go completely off the wall and you're just like, OK, let's go with it. I'm going to trust that, you know, where we're going and let's go with it. So that's really exciting to have that connection with somebody. The next question is, how do you think improv can create some fun uh, and impact specific areas of your life and work? Well, I think it can, uh, I think what it does for me is it uh, gets me out of being the solo artist. You know, I, I'd like to do things solo, but, um, you know, lately I've done uh, some voiceover work for another podcast called... Um, well, it used to be called Poetic Earthlings, but now it's called Welcome to Earth Stories. And getting direction uh, from somebody is something that I'm like, oh boy, it's not tough for me to do, but um, I, I sometimes I get resistant to it. And I'm like, no, I did it and it's done and there we go and let's move on. And when it's somebody else's vision, um, I have to buy into it. And with improv, you automatically buy into it because you trust that person. And for me, sometimes I've had uh, difficulties where, you know, buying into whatever the vision was or, you know, if the vision didn't go far enough. So I'm like, well, here, let's push the vision some more. Let's let's push this, push, push, push. And that's, you know, not necessarily what you need to do. You just need to trust that director or you need to trust your partner that you're working with that. Um, they can be that set of eyes that goes, nah, we're a little too far. Let's pull it back. And I'd rather people be too far so that way we can pull them back. So if you're at 120%, Hey, let's dial that back to hundred percent and see where we're at. So that's how I use improv when I'm working with other people, um, which isn't a whole lot, a lot of the time, but when it's there and when it's right and when we trust each other, it's magical. <clears throat> Um, the last question is, who do you know seems to be a master of improv? What makes them a master? Well, um, I've, like I said, uh, working with Salsation, um, I, th there was a lot of masters in, in, of improv there. And uh, so I would say the whole Salsation troupe is a master of improv because not only did they trust me uh, to be a scene partner with them, but I come from a different cultural background, so I am stepping kind of on their toes. So I think they're masters for allowing me to come in and take space and be there with them. Uh, Nelson, uh, um, uh, Nelson uh, Velikez, wonderful guy, very generous, very giving, very encouraging. Even to this day, even though I live in Virginia and he's up there in Indiana, I see what he's doing through the social medias, uh, mainly through Instagram. And, you know, he's just bringing people together, making these improv teams and just having a wonderful time living his best life. So uh, I see that. I see uh, Ramon uh, Charez, um, it just a really generous soul. Uh, great director, great friend, great brother. And um, 
just everything that goes along with him. Uh, just a wonderful guy to know. Uh, he'd give you the shirt off his back. So uh, I'm very grateful for all the people that I met in Salsation and uh, the uh, the ability to work with them and to support them. So definitely, if you have an improv troupe in your town and they have kind of like an amateur night or something like that, I would give it a shot, you know, a, develop those friendships. It's not going to hurt. Not too much anyways. All right, action items. Uh, learn some improv exercises such as yes and one word at a time, uh, scene swap, and hot potato. These are games that um, you can you know look it up on Google and uh, and if you're working with somebody, you can use these games, and it really it, it kind of kicks your mind into thinking. It's like a good stiff cup of coffee or a cup of cappuccino. So I you know whatever artistic discipline you're into definitely try these out for yourself because they are uh, adaptable to what you're using. Maybe you're a painter and uh, you know, you paint the top left side of the canvas and somebody paints the bottom right side of the canvas and then you switch and then see what comes out of that. You know, that's just one simple idea there uh, for writers. Uh, something that I used to do is uh, I would sit with a uh, group of uh, friends and you write one or two lines and then you hand the paper off to somebody that uh, somebody after that and they can read what you wrote and they can either respond to it or go a different direction and we used to do that a lot when i lived in rockford and some of the stuff that came out of that was just magical and uh, and made good friends while doing that so give that a shot for yourself all right some tips uh, that he gives us is be prepared to fail. Is everything going to be hilarious? Is everything going to be, you know, um, um, like whose line is it anyways? No, some of the stuff is going to flop and that's okay. That's okay. Hey, at least you tried. That's the important thing. Give it a shot. Try it out. Some of the stuff is going to be absolutely hilarious. It's going to be better than Monty Python. And some of the stuff is going to be worse than your, you know, third grade, uh, talent, uh, talent show. So be brave. Go ahead and do it. No one's going to hurt you. No one's going to punch you in the face. Well, I should rephrase that uh, because <laughs> when I was doing uh, poetry in Chicago at the Green Mill for their uh, for the Green Mill Slam, um, there was a few drunks there and there that probably wanted to punch me in the face. But that's a whole different story. That's a whole different podcast. Next tip is listen to your partner. So if you're going to try this out with somebody, you need to listen to them. You need to be in touch with them. You guys need to be on the same page. So communicate clearly what you want to get out of this experience. Definitely give it a shot for yourself. It can develop that connection that you may need. And who knows, maybe you two form a great partnership with whatever artistic discipline that you're doing. And you're the next Simon and Garfunkel, probably better than Simon and Garfunkel. Maybe I should not show my age that much or use that example, but, uh, you know, a Penn and Teller, maybe, uh, you guys could be the next Penn and Teller who knows, but definitely the secret behind good improv is listening to that partner and trusting that partner. How do you do that? Well, the next tip is be specific. Let them know what you want out of that. Uh, out of that, uh, out of that uh, combination, out of that collaboration. That's the word I'm looking for. Let them know what you want out of that. What is the end goal? Why are we doing this? And if it's just to have fun, then just have fun. Just have fun with it. Have no expectations of it. If you are trying to become the next pen and teller, then let them know, hey, I want us to be the next pen and teller. I think we've got it. So be specific about it. Next tip is be honest. If it's not fun for you, then drop out of it, leave it, let it go. If it's more uh, anxious, uh, anxiety building, then step back, step away from it. Then you're not doing it right. But definitely be honest. You know, if you're not feeling a hundred percent, let that person know, Hey, you may need to carry this for a little bit while I'm recovering from an illness or an injury or a tragedy or something like that. So be honest with them. If they are connected with you, they will want to help you out. And they, you know, maybe you do 80% and they do 120%. And then you get your 200% and you're happy. So be honest with them. Then the last tip is have fun. If it's not fun, don't do it. If it's not fun, don't do it. 
You know, it's kind of us reverting back to our childhood nature. If we're not having fun with stuff, we get bored and we, you know, we don't want to do it. Whatever artistic form you're doing, whatever artistic discipline you're doing, make it fun for yourself. Because when it's not fun, then it becomes work, regular work. And, you know, yeah, maybe you love your day job. My day job is fine. You know, I, 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 I enjoy helping people out, but I mean, it's work and, you know, I'm up at, you know, six in the morning, grabbing my coffee and I'm in front of the computer at seven answering emails and yay. You know, when I was a kid, that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't even know that was possible when I was a kid. Um, I never knew I would work for the federal government as a kid, but here I am doing it and, uh, but make it fun. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? And what's the point of, you know, making fun a habit? Have fun with it. And it is a lot of fun. Some of the best times of your life is going to be when you're partnering with somebody and doing some improv. It can be scary. You don't have to have an audience. You just improv and have fun with it. You know, you can just, you know, improv a conversation. Say you're sitting in a coffee shop and you're making up stories about people. Uh, that are sitting in the coffee shop there with you or whatever it is, make it fun. And these are just a few ideas to help you out with that. All right. Well, it's that time of the show where I let you get on with your day. I know I need to get on with my day here on this uh, beautiful Sunday morning. But just a few things uh, before I let you go into the day. Um, I hope you got something out of the show. I do this for you. I do it for me and I do it for you and I do it for my avatar, which sits just off the screen here. And, uh, I hope you really got something out of it. I hope you try, uh, doing some improv, uh, in the near future. If you're, if you're doing that and yeah, you give it a shot and you run into some issues or anything like that, you feel free to reach out to me. My email is Timothy at create dot com. I'd love to hear whatever it is that you're doing, wherever you're at. Maybe you want to become a guest on the show. Email me. I'd love to have you on as a guest for the show. Maybe you have some uh, ideas that you want me to go ahead and do the research on and do a show on. Let me know. You know, <laughs> oh, gee, give me content to fill up my calendar. Please. I'd enjoy that. Go ahead and let me know. Maybe you have some critiques of this show. Maybe you don't like the music or you don't like the artwork or you don't like hearing my voice or you want to see your more guests. Whatever critique you have, I've got pretty thick skin. I'm from Chicago, so I can handle it. But here's a here's the end result for me. You know, I, again, I'm telling you to be specific, be honest. The end result is that this turns into a five-star podcast for you that you get something out of it. I get something out of doing this podcast. I can tell you that right now. I get a lot. It gives me a, a sense of discipline. Um, it gets me, my creative juices flowing. Anytime I'm talking about art, this is the way I, I talk. That, that's just the way it is. This is the way I talk in my normal life, in my normal life. And this is my abnormal life here on the podcast. But this is just the way I talk. I enjoy talking about art with anyone. And I loved hearing what they're doing. And I always want to learn more. So I get a lot out of it. I want you to get something out of it. And if you get something out of it, I would ask that you go ahead and share it with a friend. Uh, you know, if you're listening to the podcast on a podcast app, there's a, usually a share button there. If you're watching me on YouTube, there's a, uh, there's the bell that you can, you know, like it, subscribe to it, share it with a friend by all means. Go ahead and do that. If you're getting something out of it, give it to somebody else, just like I'm giving it to you. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, I am doing a newsletter, a uh, monthly newsletter. Uh, it comes out once a month, usually about the 15th of the month. And in that, I give you ideas for stuff that you can do for that month, um, especially if it has a month with uh, some holidays in there. You know, you get some ideas uh, for projects that you can do that, you know, are cheap and quick. Um, and then I also do a recap of, uh, the podcast episodes that I'm doing. So, uh, if you'd like to subscribe to that, uh, Timothy Brian, B R I E N dot substack dot com. Uh, I, I run it off of substack. If you're on my website, you're looking at the episode, 
there's a place for you to enter in your email and you can subscribe there uh, as well for yourself. And uh, then the uh, other thing that I do is I do another podcast. It's called Find a Podcast About. And what I do there is I go and uh, listen to a bunch of different podcasts and then I review them and bring back the ones to you that I think are binge worthy, stuff that I really like. And it's not just, oh yeah, I like this podcast. I go into depth in detail about why I like this podcast. I give you the details of it, why I like it, why you should binge it. And sometimes I even get the podcast host on the show and we talk to them about, you know, why they started it up, who's the podcast for, uh, upcoming projects that they have with that podcast. So again, you can find that one at findapodcastabout.xyz. And that's where I help you outsmart the algorithm and find your next binge worthy podcast. All right, time for you to get on with your day. I'm going to get on with mine. So go out there and tame that inner critic, create more than you consume, do some improv with somebody. If you want to do some improv with me, get in contact with me, but go out there and create some art for somebody that you love yourself. I'll talk to you next time.